Okay, I'll be starting now then. Uh, today the idea is to to demo a Lightning Web component that we've been working on uh, uh, lately. Uh, here's a, a little, let me see, ah, here, okay. So my name is Mateo, I'm a developer. I started working here in Octana uh, in February this year, so around a little over six months ago. Uh, now I'm working as part of a project that uh, is meant to, to create and, and renew uh, Octana components, some that were already in the App Exchange and some weren't. Um, the idea is that many of these, these components were created um, a few years ago when we, we didn't have a Lightning Web component yet, and the idea is to, to migrate all this technology to, to Lightning Web components. Uh, many of them were created, for example, with our components. Uh, we'll see in a few minutes where, why it's convenient to, to do this migration. Um, as far as I know, uh, Salesforce is, is encouraging people and companies to, to do this migration to Lightning Web components as, as it is a uh, uh, it's better perform there's better performance with Lightning Web components and also because uh, it's it's standardized it's, it's aligned with the, the new web standards so basically the way Salesforce is encouraging this uh, we can see it uh, because until a while ago at least uh, components in the app exchange had a, a very reduced fee to be published when the paid components had a a smaller fee to be published in the app exchange, for example. So let's start with why Lightning Web Components. Uh, there are four main things to take into consideration here. They are standardized, they are easy to learn, the performance and the faster debugging. Standardized meaning that uh, Lightning Web Components uses uh, core web components. Uh, so it's built in, in native uh, language from the browser. This is uh, a good thing. Then it's easy to learn or to ramp as it uses HTML, it uses JavaScript, CSS. That is technologies that uh, many developers are familiar with. And so there it's easy to, to learn how to use it and to adapt to it. Then the performance. Uh, as this is uh, built with core web components, uh, there's no there's no abstraction uh, that that makes the performance uh, be lower. For example, our components uh, is usually a bit heavyweight because of the of the framework. It doesn't happen the same with Lightning Web components. Um, the other thing is the faster debugging. This this just means that there's a lot of information, you know, uh, for uh, specifically to Lightning Web Components. Uh, it's getting bigger and bigger the information out there. And as it uses a G, a JavaScript and HTML and CSS, it's easy to find answers uh, in in related posts uh, anywhere. You don't have to, to look just for for posts that are related to Salesforce. You can just look for something related to JavaScript and you'll probably find information useful. Um, then Aura versus Lightning Web Components. Some things that are worth mentioning here is that uh, some differences is the, the bundle structure that uh, when we create an, an Aura component, we had all the bundle structure. Uh, done by itself and now here we have to to create the the html file the js file the css file manually some naming convention conventions this means just that uh, in our components for example we used a uh, camel case and here is kebab case then the the events uh, we are losing the events that we used to have in our components that were the, the component event and the, and the application event. I don't know if you recall them or if you have used them already, but they were the component uh, were the, those events that, that were passed from child to parent and only, only the parent could, could hear it, let's say. 
and the application event was that event that went through all the application and any component could hear it. Here we are just working now in, in Lightning Web Components, we are just working with DOM events. So we we don't have the the component or applications event anymore and we will communicate directly to to the parent component, let's say. And the other thing is that it's required to work with a code editor. Uh, the developer console doesn't have a, a functionality to work with Lightning Web Component as it had, has to, to work with Aura or, or Visual Force. Here we need to use a, a, a code editor. Uh, the recommend uh, Visual Studio Code is the code is the most used and it's the one that has, uh, Salesforce has a, a particular extension pack uh, that was created for Visual Studio and includes even a, a terminal, so it's in the Salesforce uh, CLI can be used directly from Visual Studio. Then let's go in. Let's go a bit into the into the demo. I'm I'm going to show you. We can see here. Here we have Visual Studio Code. We have set up uh, our org here, our Salesforce org, and uh, it's connected to Visual Studio. Then we just need to press Command Shift palette uh, key and we can go to we can first set a default or if we haven't and work with it and then we can just press open default or this will uh, lead us automatically to to our org that is here let's put it in another here so how how does this work how how do you add the component where Basically, what you need to do is to, to open an app. For example, I don't know, marketing, we have here marketing app. Let's open it. The idea is to go to setup, go to edit page. This is similar to what we used to do with our components. There's no difference here. So, uh, let me see. So we, we took the we take the Octana com weather component. We can add it either in one column or in two columns. The, it will work in any of them. Let's add it in, in one column, for example. So here, what is happening here? I will explain this with uh, with the code later. But uh, what's happening here mainly is that it, it's already loading my my current location. That is Montevideo, Uruguay. And this is happening. This is happening because my browser has already enabled, as you can see here, the uh, the location. So my latitude and my longitude is passed to the to the backend, and and it's getting all the information from there. So then we click save. We go back, and basically here, when the component loads, we will see the information. I explain. I will explain a little bit of of the component and how it works, and then we can go into into the details. The functionality you will probably be very used to to it is, is pretty intuitive, as it's similar to any app that you may have on, on your cell phone or or anywhere. The idea is you have a main view. It is this view where you can see you can see your cities. In this case, I haven't added any city yet. So I'm only seeing Montevideo, Uruguay, my current location, and the weather for today and for the next five days. So basically here we can go to settings. And in settings here we can have, we have a, a list of all the cities that we have. These cities are uh, managed by a custom object that we created in this org uh, that is used to manage the city. It stores the, the latitude and longitude from from a city that we look for. And with that information, it gets, uh, it communicates with an API to, to get the weather, the weather forecast. So basically let's see how it works. We go to, to add city and we can add any city. For example, I don't know, we start typing new, for example, and it will look for any city with this prefix uh, in this case, and we, it will, they will be shown in, in order by, by population. So New York City is the, the most populated city that starts with new. We can go ahead and add it. And now our list of cities has our current location that we cannot edit and we cannot uh, delete it. 
and we have New York City that we have the option to to delete. We uh, let's go ahead and add one more, for example, just to see. We're gonna add Barcelona um, and Spain. So now what what we can do is go back, and basically is you know you have the the weather for New York and you have the weather for Barcelona. Uh, you can change the the degrees from Celsius to Fahrenheit. There's no no science there. It depends on what you are used to. Um, and basically, the custom object already ha uh, has another field that is a, a default field that lets. Uh, so we know which city we are seeing. So in case we want to refresh the page and we we want to load the component again. Uh, what will happen is that we will be already in New York City, that is the city that we chose as default. So basically to understand how this is working right now, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, a small scheme that is of the structure of the component to see how uh, the components communicate to each other. There is a parent component that here I called it a, Obtain a weather, let me present here. Okay, so the structure. The Octana weather is like the main component that has, uh, that is the one to, that calls the, the, the components that go inside of it. You have the Octana weather, and from the Octana weather, you can call the main view. The main view is this view that we have over here with the information with the weather forecast. Then we already we have also the managed cities that inside has another component that is the city tile that has the information about our cities. That view would be when we press the settings button, we would go to that component. Here is the, the cities view. We can manage our city here, and here is the, the city tiles. And then we have the search view that has the input and the search tile. The search tile is just you know what what uh, what we see when we start typing, uh, all the information here when side is on Aventura. So that is mainly how this works. The idea is to have a, a parent component, and in this case, is the Octana weather that will manage uh, all the other components. So we can go here to see a, a little bit of, of code. Uh, what will happen is we have Octana weather. This is our main component. As I said, we are using now a Keval case in, instead of Camel case. So the difference with our here is that this is the way to call a component. We have the main view, we have the cities component, and we have the weather search. And depending on which view we chose is which component will be loaded. Uh, a little bit of what's happening here. Um, of what's happening here. When I loaded the component, uh, it already had my current location. What was this? Why? How did this happen? Well, basically, what happened was that I have a method in the. I have two. The two main things here were. In our main view component. That I'm going to open right now. Have it here. Okay, and here. Let me one minute. I have too much sun in my face. Okay, that's better. Way better. Okay, so basically, uh, the idea here, what I was talking about, is here. The first, we're using mainly two APIs here to work uh, with this component, with this Lightning Web component. The two APIs that, that are most important is a geolocation API and a weather forecast API that I'm going to show you right now. Uh, here is how everything starts with the get current city. The get current city uh, has an HTTP request to an endpoint. This endpoint is for the, the API, and it get, uh, it receives the latitude and longitude from the browser. And with that, that latitude and longitude, what it does basically is to 
give you the name of the city and after giving you the name of the city it takes another API that is a bit more complex that is here that is the weather API that basically takes the name of the city the latitude and the longitude and with all that information it will make another request uh, to get the weather information yeah Basically, that's what going what's going on at an API level, let's say. Then, what's worth mentioning in in Lightning Web Components when we need to work with Apex, the, it's best practice to call all our Apex code just in one of our Lightning Web Components. In this case, the and always in the parent component. The parent component is the Octana weather. So here in the JS, at the top of it, you can see that we need to import all the methods that we, we will use. And uh, the class is the weather main class. Basically here is the, the namespace. Then we have the class name and then we have the method name. And all these methods are used in the component. Now, for those that aren't familiar with this, uh, we have two main ways of invoking the methods. One is with a, a wire adapter that is here that needs the, the wire decorator. And the other one is to what is called to imperatively call the Apex method. The wire adapter, we, adapter that is right here gets all the initial data that we need to lower, load our component. And basically, it, it goes, it calls, it invokes an, an Apex method, method, and it works with all that data that is returned uh, to load our component. Then we, uh, then we have the imperative methods, and those methods that are all the other methods used here to, to get the current city, to get the, the temperature, to insert cities, those are imperative methods, meaning that we call them only when we need to use them. The wire method will be called every time, but the, the imperative methods will only be called when we need to. So keep in mind that, that like in Aura, we need to have all our methods, uh, decorate all our Apex methods, decorated with Aura enabled. You know, like this was this is the same that we have in Aura. We need all of them decorated with the Aura enable. An additional thing thing is that for wire methods that we were talking about, we need to have cacheable uh, fit through. This is basically that um, it will cache information to improve the performance on in in runtime. So the methods that are wire. Uh, with, that use the wire adapter that in, in this case is only a method that gets the initial data data uh, will need to have cacheable equal, uh, equals true. Any other method uh, doesn't need this, just the hour enable is enough. Uh, and actually if, if we need to a method to to perform a DML statement uh, it's not able to do it with the cacheable equal through equals true. So we need to do it just with an hour enable method. Okay, about wire methods, that's the, the main information, the, main, the most important things uh, are that is this. Um, we need to keep in mind that when we're, we're working with Apex methods in, in JavaScript, uh, the methods will uh, always return a promise. So, to work with the information, I don't know, for example, set temp unit uh, sets the temperature uh, when, we, when we are changing from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And what, what we need to consider here is that anything we want to do with the new parameter, we need to do it after the value is returned. So we have the dot then that is to work with the information that is uh, the return of the, of the promise. We need to wait until we get this information in order to update or to refresh our, our data. Basically, that's what's important uh, about uh, imperative methods. 
also we need to work with imperative methods in some particular cases because wire adapters uh, are currently at least are not able to work with all the the custom objects uh, the all the standard objects for, from salesforce for example if you want to work with uh, the task uh, object or the event object you need to to do to do it with an imperative method okay it's like a lot of, inf of information but uh, probably uh, if you read it will be more more clear but is to have an idea of how this works now what we talked about also is about how we communicate with the events basically what's happened here is that anything we do in the child components will be sent uh, with a DOM event it will be dispatched to the parent component the best practice here is always to uh, dispatch an event to the parent component and the parent component can dispatch the event to, to the other parent until we get to the root component and then automatically uh, the information uh, any change we made in octana weather that is where we change the information when we we get data from from the back end or where we work with our information that information automatically passes to the child components via uh, api decorators what are api api de decorators those are uh, this one here this one's here let's see we can see them basically here these api decorators is the information that the component will receive from the parent component so you can see here in the in the parent component the, that when we call the main the main view when the main view is called we will be giving uh, some information that was uh, calculated or 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 taken from the back end for example the the weather uh, the handler the handler no the weather and the data the the unit all that information the city list here in the cities uh, will be passed automatically from the parent to the child and this is important because it's important that we don't do any changes uh, in the child components the child components should only let the parent component know that we that we are work that a change needs to be done and the change will be done in the parent component so that's how the information flows in a in a lightning web component so then let's talk about some some best practices or, or tips that are important here first is that epic method methods uh, are only to get data or for DML statements. This is a bit of what we were talking about earlier. Uh, uh, it can be with wire, wire methods or, or imperative methods, but in any case, uh, the, they should be only to communicate to the backend, but changes, uh, but any other kind of modification to the data should happen, shouldn't happen in the backend. The information shouldn't mutate then single source of truth to the, data, to the data what does this mean it's also what we were talking about earlier that any change done should be done in the parent component i mean every change should be done in the octana weather the main view the mars cities the city tile all these components shouldn't make any change they should just dispatch an event to the, for the parent and the parent should uh, make the changes and communicate back again to the child. Then, let's see, one more. Then event handling is this well, that we were talking about is, is connected the two and the three, the single source of truth and event handling. Then another thing is to use LSDS, you know, the sales for lightning design system that it was already available. It has been available for, for a while now, but it's, it's important not to reinvent things that are already available. We have a, a lot of things here to, to get the, the feel of, of Salesforce, the icons, the, the 
the colors, the fonts, everything already in the uh, cell phone lightning design system and we should try to take advantage of this. And then uh, this is something that, that we came around while, while we were working with this component that is uh, how to work with SVG VG. Um, the thing here is that we can't work uh, with these kind of files as we used to work in Aura or, or in anything, you know. You, you can load many of these files in a, in a static resource and that static resource uh, uh, use it in, in our code. Uh, it's not supported yet. It's not that you can, uh, maybe in the future you will be able to, but in the pre in, until now, you ca you have you need to have one static resource per each image uh, that for per each uh, vector image that you are loading, and this is very uncomfortable, especially when you're working with many icons. Because for example, this app works with many icons. We have this icon here, each of the icons here, and the setting icon is a is a custom icon. The refresh icon is a custom icon. All these custom icons can be loaded all together. So what we did here in our code is to create a Lightning Web component that is specifically made to manage all the uh, vector images. We have it here with all the, all the files. And the idea here is that anytime we need to use this information, we just call this component. For example, we can see it here, we call the Octana Weather Icon with the API, with, with this public property, we pass the icon name, and with the icon name, we can load all the information that we need. This is a bit tricky because we are used to use um, a static resource with all the information, and with Lightning Web Component, this is not supported yet. So th those are the, the main things to, to talk about here. Uh, that's the how this works and uh, basically it's a, a regular weather app that we're all used to and it's pretty intuitive we can also delete uh, the cities that we have and and it's pretty easy to work with uh, so now if you have any any question it was a quick demo on how to work with lightning web components feel free to 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 ask me now any question that you may have maybe if you're already working with Lightning Web Components, or maybe if you want to start and you are not sure how to start, feel free to, to ask me. I'm going to give you a few minutes if you have any questions. Or if anything wasn't really cre clear, uh, <laughs> sometimes uh, it's not easy to, to talk to, to a crowd. Hey, Mateo, I think you have a question in your chat. I have a question in my chat. Oh, let me see. Oh. Let me, uh, let's see where, where, here. Uh, yes, the code, uh, well, the code is currently available in in uh, our Git repository in Assembler. Uh, I think that the amount of, of people that is allowed to, to work in, in an Assembler is, is limited by, by Assembler. The amount of people that are allowed to, to see a repository, I don't know if it's 15 or something like that. And the, rep the repository is, is a bit crowded. Uh, I don't know if we can, I don't think we can put this in a, in a public repository, but if uh, you can contact me and I can uh, share the code with you if, if you need it. And I should talk probably with, with, with Dagoberto that he manages the, the assembler repository to see how this should be managed, the, the availability of the code. There are also, keep in mind that there are also, um, I think I have it here. Uh, LWC recipes. This is in, this is a repository that was created by by Salesforce that has a lot of information that is 
that has a lot of examples of how to use the data. Uh, feel free to, to come here and also to, to get information, but sure, if you need anything about this code that may help you develop your own code, feel free to at least contact me and we will see what we can do. Hello, Mateo. Uh, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Steve, right? Hello. I'm Steve from Vero. I have a question. I really like it, the last part about your question about the um, SVG icons. Yep. Uh, I understand you create um, a component to render the SVG. Yes. And you pass the props. <clears throat> so um, similar in React App is to create, for example, a styling component, face icon, for example. Only uh, you pass the props, sure, to render each, um, I, for example, no user, uh, or another type of icon. Is that similar, sure? Uh, it's similar. It's similar because uh, what you mean is that you can only uh, you need to do it individually, one by one. Yes, in your code, I sh I see you create a, a component to render the SVG. Yes. Can you show me your code, please? Sure. Let's go there, and we have it. Let's open it again. Okay. Here. Yes. The component has all the SVG files. Yes. Okay. And basically, what we have here is an is a template if true that this only goes to here it's a, it's a get exactly. and, and with this get uh, depending of the here the, the icon name that is this public property that we pass to the component uh, depending on that is with which icon it will render yes yes in my case a uh, I put all, all the SVG files in a folder. So yes. in this in this case, I put the the URL yes. to render uh, the each icon. No? But it's a similar, no? Yeah, it's similar, but that's that's what uh, it can be done. It can't be done here uh, with Lightning Web Components because I I don't know why, but for example, in our in it's not supported yet. In Aura, you can you could have a folder uh, with all the icons and that folder you upload it uh, with the, to the, as a static resource. Yeah. Here you can't do that. But, uh, so you have to, to create a lightning web component with all of those icons. But it's similar to, it's similar to what you say of creating a folder and call that folder. Yes, don't worry, I understand that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Components is different, no? but yeah. The detail is about the static resources, but it's similar to what you say about uh, using a folder. Yes, exactly. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Another question. Hi, Mateo. I have a question. My name is Ronald. Yeah, hi, Ronald. Hi. Uh, I how do you populate the list of cities? I, did you use an API or what? Uh, depending of which list of cities you are referring to, you are referring to uh, when with the prefix here when you are searching for new cities. Yeah, exactly. Yes, this is a one. This is a geolocation API that. And uh, basically, this is a geolocation API that is it's called Geocode. Uh, I have it right here. Let's see. So we have two main APIs here. One is the, the weather forecast API, and the other is the geocoding API. Geo, the geocoding API works uh, mainly in two ways. The first way is it can receive the latitude and longitude from the browser and return the, na the name of the city that is closer to that, uh, to that location. Uh, that is what we do when we get the current location. And the other thing it can do is if you give it a, a prefix, like in, in the examples, it was new for, for New York or 
or Barcelona or anything you, you want to, to type, what we'll do uh, is give you the name of the cities the, and the location of those cities. And that information, that API is, co that API is called here. It will return, that API will return a list using that city prefix that uh, it goes here in the URL and uh, it will sort them by, by population and only with the name of the of the city it will return basically returns the latitude and the longitude for a city that's what we need it gives you more information but what we need is only that those two parameters okay thank you hi mateo this is kevin crown hello how are you i have a question um you uh I noticed that you're making your API calls from Apex classes, and we can make Lightning from Lightning Web Components. We can make API calls from JavaScript, and I was just wondering what led to the decision. Is it complexity or too difficult to do from JavaScript? Of why you're using Apex classes to make your calls? That's correct. Uh, we could do the the APIs, uh, the API calls. We can do it from from Lightning Web Components or from on from Apex. Uh, at, when we were uh, when we started developing this component, I we didn't find any information about uh, a best practice being calling the uh, the the API from Apex or from Lightning Web Components. It was possible to do it from both. Uh, we were used to work with Apex for this, and that's why uh, we kept doing it in, on Apex to to leave all the communication with with uh, and to not to to work in the front end with information uh, that wasn't from the back end let's say it's just like a, a a way of working to to keep that in in order but you can do it any of, of both ways yes i i haven't found any information about one being better than the other uh, but maybe there is. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Matteo, it's Julia. Uh, okay. I think I know the answer to this, so you can laugh, it's okay. But is there anything special you need to do for Lightning Web Components to work with mobile? To work with mobile? Uh, I'm not sure about any detail that of anything special that needs to be done uh, to work with, with mobile. Uh, I haven't read about any specific um, thing to do because the component is already device aware, uh, so I don't think I'm not sure of anything particular that we need to add. We haven't added anything in particular to this component, anything to this component in particular to work with mobile apps. Maybe we will need to, to dig into that uh, a bit more in order to have a bit more of information if there is anything that we are not uh, considering here. Because I'm, I'm sure this automatic Lightning Web Components automatically works with a uh, record page, home page. It's not like in Aura that we needed to, to make it available to, to record page or to home page or to apps. Uh, here it's available to all together at the same time. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. I think that's great. Any other questions? Okay, so 
if you don't have any other questions, we can call it a day here. <laughs> uh, it was a pleasure. Feel free to, to contact me uh, if any question comes up later. Um, maybe when you start digging it a bit more with Lightning Web Components or any doubt that uh, anything you, you came up to that you aren't sure or, or you would like a second opinion, uh, feel free to contact me. Thank you. Thank you, Mateo. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.